Shodhananana Braja Jananjana Jishodhananana Braja Jananjana Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Is that correct? Yes. yes. So this is Canto 9, Chapter 9, Text 48. Uh, anyone have glasses? Vyasito. Iti vyabhasito bhudya. Is that 
the right verse? Narayana Grihitaya Narayana Grihitaya Hitanya Bhavam Agyanam Tatasvam Bhavam Astitaha Bhyava Shito Buddha Narayana Grihitaya Hitvanya Bhavam Agyanam Tatasam Bhavam Ashtitaha Iti Bhyava Sito Buddha Narayana Grihitaya Hitvanya Bhavam Agyanam Tatasam Bhavam Ashtitaha Thus, Vyavashitaha, having firmly decided, Buddha, by proper intelligence, Narayana Grihitaya, completely controlled by the mercy of Narayana, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We try that again. Completely controlled by the mercy of Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Completely controlled by the mercy of Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hmm. Itva, Itva, giving up. Giving up. Anyabhavam, Anyabhavam. Consciousness other than Krishna consciousness. Consciousness other than Krishna consciousness. Agyanam. Which is nothing but constant ignorance Which and darkness. Dark. Tata. Tata. Thereafter. Thereafter. Some. Some. His original position as an eternal servant of Krishna. Krishna. Uh, 
Bhavam Devotional Service Ashtitaha Situated Translation Thus Maharaj Katvanga by his advanced intelligence in rendering service to the Lord gave up false identification with the body full of ignorance. In his original position of eternal servitorship, he engaged himself in rendering service to the Lord. When one actually becomes purely Krishna conscious, no one has any right to rule over him. When situated in Krishna consciousness, one is no longer in the darkness of ignorance. And when freed from all such darkness, one is situated in his original position. Jivera Surubhoi Krishnera Nityadasa. The living entity is eternally the servant of the Lord. And thus, when he engages himself in the service of the Lord in all respects, he enjoys the perfection of love. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvise Sasanivari Pascharine Mukam karuti vachalam pangu langayate girim yakrapa tamaham bande Siguru dinatarinam Banjakal patrudis chakrapa sendibye vacha Patitanam pavane bio bashnavi bio namonamaha Sri Krishna chaitana pravunitan and the shadaita gadadha Shvasari gova bhakta vrinde Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare so once, Srila Prabhupada was invited to a television show. I'm not sure where it was, but this man was famous for insulting people. So they informed Prabhupada that he will try to insult you. And this man asked Prabhupada, what will happen if everyone becomes Krishna conscious? You know, who will who will farm, who will teach, who will manufacture, who will do anything. So the man thought he had Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, don't worry, there will always be fools like you who will not surrender to Krishna. <laughs> so Prabhupada got the first punch. Uh, and this, well, Prabhupada was, was once asked, uh, Will the whole world become Krishna conscious? Will everyone become Krishna conscious? And he said, no, they're not. They're, people are not that intelligent. Not everyone is that intelligent that they can understand Krishna consciousness. So here the word buddha, Maharaj Katvanga, by his intelligence, in rendering service to the Lord, Krishna was supplying him intelligence. What is your next step? And now he realizes his next step is, I should give up everything. So... So many in so many places, directly or indirectly, basically Prabhupada's saying, if you want to be Krishna conscious, you really, you really cannot be stupid. It, it doesn't work. It's just you can't extract yourself from the material world if you're not intelligent. Because Maya's job is to cover your intelligence, and the spiritual master's job is to give you intelligence. At the same time, unless you're guided through devotional service by Krishna within, that intelligence may not actually manifest in action. It may just stay in your head, like you know. You know what to do. And Prabhupada said something which I found, which I've always felt, but I never heard him say this till recently. He said, unless you read my books, your life is in a very dangerous position. So what did Prabhupada mean? It meant that as conditioned souls, we don't have sufficient intelligence to figure out how Maya is bewildering us and cheating us. And in this verse, it said, um, what did it say? Oh, Prabhupada said, um, 
one becomes Krishna conscious, no one has any right to rule over him. What does that mean? Who's going to rule over him? His mind, his senses, the material energy, the modes of nature. Ordinary materialistic people with their um, advertisements, their ploys for Sanskrit. Nobody's, nobody can control him. But um, without properly engaging in devotional service, getting the intelligence from Srila Prabhupada, getting that guidance from, from Krishna within, basically, as Krishna says, Daivyesha Gunamai. You know, that verse, Krishna is saying, you can't conquer material nature. It, another way of saying it is like, if you try without surrender, good luck, because you can't. It's not going to happen. It's not, it's not something that we can do by our own power. And to think we can is, is the height of stupidity. So many times devotees have written me and they're having trouble in Krishna consciousness. So when someone's having trouble in Krishna consciousness, the first thing I ask them is, how, how much are you reading Prabhupada's books? And if they're having trouble in Krishna consciousness, what do you think their answer is? Not very much. So often before I um, answer any question or, or try to give them any guidance, I say, I, I say could you read Prabhupada's books just for an hour every day? And if you still have this problem, write me back. And no one has written me back yet. <laughs> so I think that um, many devotees don't realize how important Srila Prabhupada's books are. They, I think some devotees think it's, it's like there if you need it. You know, like here's some vitamins. If you don't feel good, take them. No, it's not like that. Here's some vitamins. You will not feel good if you don't take them. That's how it should be seen. And um, in, if, if we study Prabhupada's books, we can see again and again this word bud, buddha or buddhaya or buddhi. It's always there. You have to be intelligent enough to understand how you're entangled, to understand how to do the right thing. And what's being explained here also is that it's not sufficient it's not to, sufficient to understand because because one can say we could say practically speaking if you understand and you don't act you don't understand sometimes like with children you say don't do this do you understand and they say yes and then what do they do they do this and you say, I thought you understood. Yeah, I understood. This is what I'm not supposed to do, but I wanted to do it. So I did it. Right? So we are like that, aren't we? We think we understand. Well, if you understood, why would you do it? You wouldn't. Right? So. Understanding, of course, is the beginning. We need to understand. But you can fully say you understand when you act on it. Just like sometimes you meet a person, they have no money. And you say, so-and-so, so, -so he's a very rich person and he's very famous. He's giving a seminar on how to become a millionaire. And this poor person says, yes, I've been to all those millionaire seminars. I've read all the books. I know everything. And you're looking at him and he doesn't even have a place to live. And he knows everything. So sometimes we're like that. Yes, yes, I know everything. Well, if you know, then why aren't you acting? So that's what's being described here. It's that he understood and it came to the point of realization that this is what I must do. And so our, our challenge is this, what we've understood to put it into action. Last night I was, we were talking about how much Prabhupada wanted us to be like him, which is what, like, for us seems impossible. And in so many ways Prabhupada would say, when he was glorified, he said, yeah, and you also, you do it. You can do it or you do, you do what I'm doing. Oh, Prabhupada, you're so great, and you become great also. Um, 
how to do that. And, you know, in one sense, we can't do it. It's not possible. But in the other sense, everything's possible by Prabhupada's mercy. So, how will we realize anything unless we have Prabhupada's mercy? And how will we have Prabhupada's mercy unless we follow his instructions? And how will we have his mercy uh, if we don't read his books? One time, someone asked Prabhupada, he said, Srila Prabhupada, uh, please give me your mercy so I can understand your books. And Prabhupada said, my books are my mercy. Like, like you just read them, that's, you're getting mercy through reading them. If you, if you read, if you hear in this mood that I want to apply, I want to surrender, then the mercy will come and everything will be clear and Krishna consciousness will be very easy. And that's why Prabhupada said, it can seem extremely difficult to be Krishna conscious, at the same time it can be very easy. It just depends. If you have the mercy, it's quite easy. And if you don't, it's quite impossible. There, there's a nice story also. Uh, there are many stories about what it means to get Prabhupada's mercy, but one story that stands out in my mind was a devotee. He was very young. And he wanted to chant 64 rounds a day. And Prabhupada really never encouraged that, at least when we were younger. I mean, he encouraged you should chant more, but he encouraged us to do Sankirtan, distribute his books, open temples, and so forth. And um, so this devotee was in Mayapur, and he was chanting 64 rounds. And the devotees felt like this is wrong. And he had built himself, apparently he built himself a tree house. And he was living a little bit separately from the devotees because he didn't want to associate, because if he associated, then he wouldn't be able to chant his rounds. He needed that privacy. And because the leaders didn't like it, sometimes they would kind of, what's the word? when You, you want Prabhupada to say something? Question beg? Is that it? You know? Beg the question. You know, they would say, like, Prabhupada, he's doing this, and kind of, you know, tell Prabhupada what to say, more or less. Beg the question. That's, right? You kind of, within your question, the answer is there. Okay. Then the Prabhupada didn't say anything. And it was just like, whatever. You know. um, the, the next day, because they were walking, apparently, from what I could tell, they were walking near where he was living. There's so-and-so, and he's, you know. And so they brought it up again, and so this time they engaged Prabhupada. And one devotee said, he wants to chant 64 rounds, and Prabhupada said, ah, as soon as, you, as soon as you say, I want, you know, for myself, this is what I want to do, uh, that's maya. Of course, if it's Krishna's desire, that's a different thing, but you wouldn't say, I want to do this because Krishna wants, that's different, but this was just, I want and it's interesting, right? It's like 64 rounds. I can't do that every day. And he's doing it. And all glories to him. And this is amazing. And then we have a, a story uh, where Prabhupada told Shruti Kirti, don't go to Mangalarti. You know, it's like, you know, in every letter, practically every other letter, Prabhupada's saying, go to Mangalarti. And he's telling his servant, don't go. You stay with me. So now if... Shruti Kirti goes to Mangalarti, he's doing what he wants. And he did go to Mangalarti, and Prabhupada asked him. Prabhupada sent his secretary to get him, bring him back, and Prabhupada said, never go to Mangalarti, you just stay with me. That's my desire. And um, the other day we were reading a purport verse, uh, how Prabhupada was saying he wants us to all to go back to Godhead and then we think, but no, but that's a, a desire. I shouldn't want to go back to Godhead. You, know, you should want to go if your guru wants you to go because your guru like, doesn't want to stick around here forever and he, his job is to get you to go back to Godhead. So that's good if you go, he wants you to go, you should go. Not because you want to go, but because he wants you to go. Then it's okay, right? If I want to go, then we could say, okay, that's karma mishra bhakti. It's just, I want liberation. I want freedom from suffering. I don't like this world. All right, that desire is okay, but it's not pure bhakti. But if your guru says, I want you to go, 
then you should go. And at one time, a devotee said, on a morning walk, said, Prabhupada, I want to stay in this material world and preach and like that, which is, of course, the desire of a pure devotee, but that devotee was not on that level, so apparently it was artificial because Prabhupada said, don't you, he pointed the king at this devotee, said, don't you ever desire to stay in this world, this miserable, horrible world, don't you ever desire to stay here? Now, if you're a pure devotee, naturally you will. But um, one devotee had asked Prabhupada about this, should I desire to stay here? And the devotee was very young. And Prabhupada said, no. If you stay here, you'll just get entangled. You're not, cap you're not qualified to be on that level. So Prabhupada's coming and saying, get out, just get out. Time's up. You know, your, your business is finished. I will help you. So if that's Prabhupada's desire, then we do it, and then we get his mercy. And if Prabhupada says, stay here and we want to go, then we don't get his mercy. If Prabhupada says, don't go to Mangalarti, and we do, we don't get his mercy. And when you get his mercy, everything's easy. When you don't have his mercy, everything is difficult. There's a beautiful statement by Srila uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur that stuck with me deeply. And it relates to this realization that Mahat Maharaj Kadvanga had. Uh, very, what we would think is simple realization. He realized he's not the body. And as a consequence, he surrendered to Krishna immediately, just freely gave up everything. And so Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said, when one is a pure devotee, they become situated in their identity as servant of Krishna so perfectly, so deeply, so well that there's no material situation in this world that can shake them. In other words, the whole world could be given to them and they would never budge one iota, one fraction of an inch from their realization that I am simply a humble servant of Krishna. I am nobody, no matter what happens to them. And we all know when we're given a little glory, then we think, yes. Isn't it? A pauper is proud of his penny. It's very difficult to be honored and glorified and entirely, 100%, not be shaken from your identity that I am an insignificant nobody. It's very difficult. Only a pure devotee can, can be on that level. I mean, we can understand theoretically, but Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati is saying, it doesn't matter how this person is glorified, what position he has, what opulence he has, what resources he has, no matter how many people are telling him he's the best thing in the universe, it doesn't budge him at all from his realization that I'm just an insignificant, nothing, tiny servant of Krishna. And we always saw that with Prabhupada, no matter what anybody said, he would always say, I'm nothing. You know, once, you know, once a devotee asked a question of Prabhupada, something, something like, um, like can, a, can a pure devotee know what's in the mind, what's in the heart of his disciples, can he know the future, you know, can a pure devotee know all these things? At one, one time Prabhupada said, if Krishna wants him, in this case Prabhupada said, yes, one who is a pure devotee, he can know exactly his disciple, his heart, he can know the future, he can know all these things. And then the devotee said, oh, so therefore, Prabhupada, so you know all these things? And Prabhupada said, I didn't say I know those things. I said a pure devotee knows those things. I didn't say that I'm a pure devotee. I think So Prabhupada set that example for us, that uh, you, you could not uh, give Prabhupada credit I was told there was a morning walk, I didn't hear it. Uh, I was told by one of our god brothers that there was a morning walk. And they were talking to Prabhupada about predictions that, that someone will come, the Senapati, the Lord Mahaprabhu's general, will come and spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. And Prabhupada's listening. And at one point, Prabhupada said, Do you think they're talking about me? <laughs> Hare Krishna. So, um, in one letter Prabhupada had written to 
to the devotees in London, I believe, in 1973, he said, Krishna is willing to be caught by you. He's waiting to be caught by you, and he's waiting to catch you if you want to be caught by him. So, it's a beautiful way of looking at Krishna consciousness, is that it's, it's waiting for us. It's just waiting. The mercy is there, as much mercy as you need to be Krishna conscious, it will be given, whatever you require. Yeyatamam prapajyante, that's Krishna's promise. Uh, if we understand Prabhupada's heart, his desire, what he wants from us, if we work together, uh, give so much pleasure to Prabhupada, if we, if we make a mistake and just say, I'm sorry, that helps work, us work better together, that gives so much pleasure to Prabhupada. We, we, chant our, we chant our rounds properly, trying to avoid offense. All these little things, they give so much pleasure to Prabhupada. You make an effort. I'm not good at this, but, but Prabhupada wants me to do it. I make some effort. I get so much mercy. Sri Panchatattaki Jai. I think you all know this purport in the CC where Prabhupada is talking about how some of his godbrothers had their eye on the property of the Gaudiya Math and they were thinking, apparently thinking, while Srila Bhakti Siddhanta was alive, how they will get the, the main properties or some of the properties of Gaudiya Math after his departure. And so Prabhupada made a very telling statement. He said, of course, Prabhupada was not interested in the properties. So Prabhupada was talking about the order of the guru and how you get the power to preach from the order. And he said, so it's kind of like, you know, Krishna saying, Duryodhan, do you want me or my army? And Duryodhan's like, definitely want your army. I, I don't need you. Well, I need you when I can have your army. So it was something like that. And then Prabhupada is saying, so you could get the power to preach from the guru, by his mercy, by pleasing him, or you could get his property. Like, which one do you want? And so he said, they got the property, and I got the mercy, the power to preach, because I followed the order. So, so Prabhupada was saying, you could enjoy the property of the guru. Or you could serve, and of course you would really enjoy when you serve, that's for sure. Or you can serve the order of the Guru, or you can enjoy the property of the Guru. But if you try to enjoy the property of the Guru, you won't get the mercy of the Guru. You won't get the empowerment to preach. Uh, you won't get the empowerment that you need, and the, therefore the realizations you need to advance in Krishna consciousness. So, if we are intelligent, then we will understand Prabhupada, his mission, his desire. And follow those instructions, we'll get his mercy, everything will be easy, we'll be happy, we will enjoy life. And if you try to enjoy without the mercy of Guru, all I can say to you is, good luck, it's not going to happen. Hare Krishna. So there's a sign that says, class ends at 8.45, and it is 8.45. And I'm going to try to leave by 10 o'clock this morning, because I have a meeting at 1 o'clock. So if I can get to the retreat center by one, I'm good. Otherwise, I'll get there too late. But anyway, I guess we have so many exalted devotees here. And I shouldn't speak in their presence, but I was asked to. But what would you like to add? To? What are your comments? Thank you for the class. I think that at our present level of Krishna consciousness, sometimes there are statements that Prabhupada makes that we may not completely understand. We may understand partially, mm -hmm. but we may not understand them completely. And therefore, when other statements come along that may be different from those statements that we're, we know about, then it may, we have to make an adjustment to see how they, what we said was simultaneously true and that mm. more could be added to it. Yeah, very good, yeah. And also the, <laughs> um, 
Sometimes I've heard, um, you've probably also heard, a devotee will give a class and he'll make a statement and a conclusion. And, and you were with Prabhupada when Prabhupada said something different. You have that experience? All the, all the time? <laughs> yeah. And, and um, yeah. So we have to be careful if we think that's the only thing. I mean, it might be the only, I mean, you might have a Prabhupada saying it a thousand times. Okay, that's different than one time. Yeah. Um, so yeah. what's the caution? Be careful when you think you know everything? Well, if we, as you mentioned, there is different stages of knowledge. There is theoretical knowledge, which is called Gyan, and then there's even Vigyan, but Vigyan may not be complete. It may just be partial. So in order to go from Vigyan to knowledge, Gyan to Vigyan, and then above that is conviction. But conviction only comes from experience of trying to apply our Vigyan. Mm -hmm. and, and then we see things from different perspectives, and as we get the experience, then conviction is there. And when conviction is there, it's not the end of the story. Then we have to acquire skill, especially in the loving exchanges, because our conviction is prema bhakti. We should be engaged in loving exchanges with Krishna and his devotees. And then after that, then when we're always absorbed in actual Krishna consciousness, and we can see things from the objective point of view, as Prabhupada points out, then we'll actually have the characteristics, the qualities, the character of a pure devotee. And then, then we'll actually be able to understand things from the right perspective. What about the, um, the fact that Krishna consciousness is not three-dimensional? So I could understand something in one way, you could understand it in another way, and it's completely different and we're both right. Yeah, it's just like in the spiritual world, Mother Jasoda sees Krishna as a little baby, and, Mother, and Radharani and the gopis see him as their paramour. So that they both have a different perspective on Krishna, but they're both right. Yeah, and, and, and also, um, according to your level of advancement, what is appropriate for me may not be appropriate for you, or vice versa. Oh, and so we have to adjust accordingly. Otherwise, we um, may try to jump too high too fast and then crash. Just, just one more point. When you mentioned about reading Prabhupada's books, that we should read them with some kind of, what did you say, with uh, sincerity or... But I, I think the first step is what Prabhupada writes in the introduction to the Bhagavad Gita, is that at least theoretically accept yeah, yeah. that there's something very valuable coming from a pure devotee. We have to accept that Prabhupada at least theoretically, as we have to accept theoretically mm -hmm. that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we also have to accept theoretically the Prabhupada is an Uddhama Adhikari, whatever that may mean, the he's actually none different from Krishna. And if we read in that spirit, Prabhupada calls that, calls that submissive hearing. Yeah. Yes. There's another point you just made me think of. I was, um, sometimes a devotee may read in the spirit of gathering information as a kind of, as a, well, for various reasons. One's to show off, I know more than you, or as a weapon. Um, and I have a story, uh, it's a very, it's kind of an ugly story, but it illustrates this. I was with some devotees by circumstance who were, who were on the, in the process of leaving ISKCON. And, you know, if you leave ISKCON, to, you, you'll need to rationalize it, because you can't really do that without feeling extremely guilty unless you rationalize that these are the reasons, and this is why I should, and this is why it's good, and this is why Prabhupada would really want me to do it, and so forth. So I was with those devotees, and they were reading Prabhupada's books to prove all the reasons that ISKCON was off. It's like, look at this purport right here, it proves. So you, 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 know, you can go in with an agenda and read Prabhupada's books, to prove whatever it is you want to prove, isn't it? And I was witness to that. It was very interesting to watch it, and they were all doing it. I'm like, you're, you're reading Prabhupada's purports to prove that the movement he started is bogus. That's really weird, isn't it? So, you know, have to be careful. Submissive, submiss why am I reading, why am I hearing? So I can submit to the desire for Srila Prabhupada. Oh. Is one very biggest Sanskrit scholar in our society read 
was probably actually did with, along with Perdumia Bru, he he put a lot of the Sanskrit into our books. And of course, we know one day he went to Shul Prabhupada and he said, Prabhupada, can you give me your blessings that I could find a pure devotee? <laughs> <laughs> and he later found a pure devotee. You know this story? And the pure devotee said, unless you chant 64 rounds, you can't go back to Godhead. And he wrote Prabhupada and told him that. Unless you chant, Prabhupada, unless you chant 64 rounds a day, you can't go back to Godhead. You believe that? Like, we're talking about intelligence being covered? I don't know if it gets much, much worse than that. And Prabhupada said, no, it's not like that. It's not a formula. You do A, B, and C, and you go back to Godhead. You, he said, you cannot force Krishna to love him. No, I think he said, if you don't chant 64 rounds, you, can't, you won't get prema. He said, you can't force Krishna to give you prema with some number of japa. And then, then I was, this was insane. Another example of how Krishna can take intelligence away. It's very similar to this. I was with a devotee in the early days who, who later left Krishna consciousness and he became a follower of a person who was being advertised actually by his mother as Bal Krishna, baby Krishna, Bal Yogi. You remember him? That, like, what was his name? What do they call him? I can't remember his name. Anyway. Uh, Guru Maharaj. Gu Guru Mahara Maharaji. Guru Maharaji. So his mother advertised him that he is, he is Krishna, Bal Krishna. And so that was about 1972 that that movement was popular. And this devotee went to him and he wrote Prabhupada because I was there. He was in the temple. I was there. And I found this out. He wrote Prabhupada and he told Prabhupada, you should surrender to Guru Maharaji. Hare Krishna. The funniest thing is you can find this Guru Maharaji on the internet now. He's a self-development guru, suit, tie, corporate speaker. You know. His mother rejected him. She said, actually, he's not Paul Krishna. I made a mistake. Because they got in a fight or something. You know. His brother. Oh, his brother is. Yeah, so he's a corporate guru now. and Yeah. Really? <laughs> oh, they were, the two brothers are fighting over which one is God, yeah. Hare Krishna. And um, as Prabhupada said, there's a different God loitering on every street corner in India. You know, take your pick. And Prabhupada used to say, you American, you know, in America, you American people are so intelligent, I can't understand how you're being cheated by these so-called incarnations. Yeah, so we're not that intelligent. Maybe intelligent in, you know, science, technology, but not in spirituality. Hare Krishna. Anything else? Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada Kizanitai Gopramanandi Hari Hari Bo